Caroline B. Marks is the costume designer of Unprisoned on Hulu. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Caroline, when I think of the costume design on this series, the very first thing I think of is your work costuming Paige and Young Paige in identical outfits, which is so fun. Um, talk us through the process of recreating, you know, Carrie Washington's clothes for, you know, uh, a young a young actress, um, Jordan. Uh, Jordan McIntosh, and also what of those many looks is your absolute favorite that you did? Ah, well, it was a lot of fun and also quite challenging because obviously Carrie wears adult size clothes and Jordan is in a size, you know, a very small child size clothes. <laughs> so everything either had to be cut down from adult size clothing or we had to actually recreate the whole thing. Um, I think this was Jordan's absolute favorite thing to do because she got to dress up not only like her idol Carrie, but also the fact that she got to wear adult clothes and that was really fun for her. Um, the biggest challenge always, oddly enough, were the shoes, uh, which you don't really see too much of in the show, but you know, obviously Carrie is wearing heels and they don't make children's heels for kids. So <laughs> we try to find a body that was similar and um, and we actually had to hand paint or recreate, you know, embellish those shoes themselves. So that was quite a challenge, but it was really fun and it was great to see both of them together on screen, which was kind of amazing. And as far as my favorite of their outfits go, hmm, that's such a tough one. There are so many different aspects to different things. I mean, obviously the, the first uh, time we see her in the pilot, you know, cutting down that little jacket, it was actually a Diane von Furstenberg, uh, believe it or not. And it was a vintage one, but we wound up finding two of. So that was amazing but even the jeans need to be cut down from adult jeans because of the pockets and the way things are done so that one was kind of fun i think there was a great story actually that happened with her ted talk dress which is at the end um it, there was a request uh from the producers that they wanted her to look very much like kate middleton and they specifically asked for a yellow dress and we actually found a really cute Karen Millen dress um, online and she's a British designer. So that was very appropriate. Um, we wound up getting two of those and we did do a little altering to it. We made it a little bit shorter and we gave her a funkier belt. But the really amazing part was, is several months after we've completed all of the shooting of the series, we actually saw a photo of Kate Middleton in that exact same dress. And so we were just so excited. I actually sent pictures to all the producers that I said, well, I guess we, we made it, we hit it, <laughs> we got lucky. <laughs> that's absolutely wild. Um, th that's incredible. And I did wanna ask you about that TED Talk dress and maybe we'll loop back to it at the end. Um, I wanna kind of backtrack though a little bit and just ask you, about you know how you came to the project specifically you know when you saw the first scripts and heard from Tracy and you know what the concept was and maybe who was going to be on board what really drew you to this to this series which I think is so unique in terms of you know the talent on screen and the balance of tone and the story that it's telling so much of it is so original what what really stood out to you to to join the project well the story itself is just so compelling. I mean, you've got to love that. It, you know, it's all about healing. And I think that that's something that's so important in this day and age. Um, I love the fact that it was based on reality, that the characters are diverse, that they had depth to them, which is, you know, not always the case, unfortunately, these days. But it was really terrific from that aspect. I think it was socially relevant. Um, I loved the group of people they put together. Um, Tracy is amazing and love her and her whole story is just so incredible. Um, I did know Yvette Bowser, who is also one of the executive producers, um, just from working in the industry for years and, and always being on kind of projects or shooting 
times when we were kind of next to each other on stages. I knew her husband because I had actually designed a pilot for him at some point during the day, you know, during the years. And and Kevin Bray, uh, the director, who's also one of the executive producers I had worked with before on a small show called Memphis Beat and a couple other times during the years. And Sheree Appleby was another director I had worked with. So it was it was kind of really fun from that aspect. Um, Brenda Strong actually happens to be a friend of mine and we work together on 13 Reasons Why along with Joy Gorman Weddles, who's an amazing executive producer. And she was also my executive producer on 13 Reasons Why as well. So it was just happiness and joy all around. I don't know what else to say, you know, it was just one of those things It was kismet. And, and it was shooting in Los Angeles and I rarely get to shoot here. So it, that was just fabulous. Loved being home. I'd say you can't overlook, you know, the practical reasons too, um, on top of all the other great, great appeal of the series. Um, let's sure. dive in with the character work. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to ask you about the three main characters in particular. Let's start with Paige, who's based mm -hmm. on Tracy. We should mention, uh, I, I didn't mention her last name, Tracy McMillan, who's yeah. um, the creator of the series and based, you know, loosely on her life story. Mm -hmm. Talk about um, all of the kind of different looks you put Carrie Washington in, because I love how Paige really embraces color and pattern, um, really bright, really fun colors. Um, so just talk about you know, your kind of inspiration for the, the palette that you used on, on page. Right. Well, it's interesting because, um, you know, comedy is color. And that's something that, you know, I've learned from all of my years. You know, I, I started back in the day on In Living Color and Stand Up. So it, it's like, it's really interesting to, to, you know, bring in all these different facets of different projects in my life. Um, you know, Tracy wanted to be very Minneapolis, but by way of Brooklyn, you know, kind of stylish, you know, probably was a hipster, hipster, but she's like adulting now. But the interesting thing is in, in real life, Tracy doesn't wear color at all. She only likes black, white, and navy, and that's it. And, you know, so that was something that was a little bit of a hurdle at the beginning to, you know, to try to do is to add color into that palette. But that was something that Carrie really embraces and she loves color. So, you know, it was a really wonderful collaboration. We had great discussions about all these things and how we eventually got to these points, which was really kind of fun. But, um, and, and it's just such a collaboration. I mean, I think that that's what was just so joyful again about the project, you know? And everybody had a bit of a say in that. Yeah, I bet. Um, let's talk about Edwin, too, uh, Paige's father on the series, played by Delroy Lindo. Two questions on him. One is about uh, a scene in, in the premiere, which mm -hmm. I love, which is uh, him going to his old girlfriend Nadine's house and kind of going through his old clothes, you know, after 17 years in prison. And he finds this old, really wonderful jacket and he's looking for his rings. Talk about picking the looks for that scene because I really feel like it gives us a glimpse into, you know, who Edwin was prior to his incarceration. So talk about, you know, the, the conversations you had about, you know, what should that look be for mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the pre-prison uh, Edwin? Right. Well, it was interesting. Obviously, Edwin is based on Tracy's father and she was generous enough to share many photographs of him. And he was always very dapper and very stylish and always was impeccable in the way he dressed. However, in this particular case, you know, it was all of his clothes were from 2004. So, you know, it was really kind of fun to delve into that. And we chose, you know, we put creases in his jeans and, and, you know, the leather jacket that he wore was definitely like a 2004. I mean, we did a lot of research into, you know, a lot of cool guys at the time, like, you know, it was, it was puffy at the time, not like Sean Combs or whatever. So it was interesting how we found all these different looks and even the fur coat, these were things that were actually scripted, those two particular pieces, but the jewelry and things came in also. A lot of those were things that Delroy actually 
you know, had a hand in. He really wanted a dangly earring on, you know, his left ear. And he definitely wanted, you know, rings of a certain stature and weight. And so those were things that came into it. And it definitely is a big hit from the past. However, obviously, as he melds into society and, you know, discovers iPhones and he discovers, you know, all kinds of things, you know, as he's going through Starbucks, you know, I mean, it was fun. But Finn had a, a great influence and really gave an arc to his character as they start bonding. And um, Delroy started out in a lot of Stacey Adams and, and shoes and things that were just really hip and stylish that you would wear with jeans. But as time progresses, you'll see him starting to wear, like trading those in for Pumas and, you know, Puma sneakers and things like that, which kind of updated everything. And at the same token, you know, kept true. He, we still kept the creases in his jeans and things like that. So it was kind of a, a mix of, of the new and the old looks that we had finally in the show. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you next, which is about Finn, because I feel like as you're describing his influence on Edwin, we also see kind of Edwin's influence on opening Finn up. Like in the early episodes, there's a lot of layering and kind of muted color. And I don't know if this is just me reading into it, but he does seem to kind of embrace more color, you know, as the season progresses. So just talk about exploring the character of Finn through what he's wearing and the influence, you know, his grandfather is having on, on him. Sure. Well, you are correct. And there was more color and things like that as time progressed. I think that you'll see more color in the series in general as time progresses, which is all done very, very subtly. So it's not something that anybody's really, you know, paying attention to, but it definitely, there's some, there's a feeling that you get. And that's something that I like to do in, in my costume design is, is give those kind of subtle clues and and also people are becoming happier as they're melding together which brings about more color as well um i think of the clothes that uh that finn wears as kind of a little floppy you know um he's very intelligent but he also is got a very nerdy side to him and um i had talked to him quite a bit about his character and I wanted to bring a little bit of anime and manga into his like t-shirt designs and things like that. And Fally, the actor, absolutely loved it because he's very into that himself. So it was kind of a really wonderful natural progression with that. And I think that, you know, as Edwin takes on more of his style of clothes, Finn's character, also embraces just i think more of himself you know he becomes more of a of a whole person you know he's he's in search you know i think for this and so he grows up a little bit as as the time goes on with both color and also just the style yeah makes a great deal of sense um let's talk about a few specific episodes or moments that i particularly love and really stand out the first is, I think it's in the third episode, um, you get to do this great kind of disco dance sequence uh, with many of the main characters, you know, in these really lavish and fun, you know, dance outfits. Talk about choosing the looks for each of those characters, you know, and how fun was that for you to do something that's totally different from, you know, what the series kind of looks and feels like day to day? Mm -hmm. I have to say that is my personal favorite episode is is episode three, just because there are so many. It, it, it's just so diverse in the whole thing. I mean, starting out in the coffee shop with a tete a tete with Nadine and and Paige, and then you see little Paige in the matching, you know, white lace tops and then going off to church. So you get to see a little bit more of a formal feel and then having it meld into, you know, the Sunday dinner and the disco was so much fun. I mean, we definitely played a little homage to Saturday Night Fever with Edwin's costume and the white, you know, the white suit, the black shirt and the whole thing, you know, a little of this. <laughs> and also with Little Page, Little Ode to Flash Dance, which was really fun. And, you know, but having everything, you know, cutting everything down, believe it or not, we added 
you know, the butterfly transfer onto her sweatshirt and things to make it look a little more kiddishy, but, you know, still in the headband and everything. That was really fun. But Harry's, uh, you know, silver disco dress, you know, the one, sh the one sleeved was just, that was something. It took us forever to find, I have to say. And, but it was that, I love that. It was, it, that to me was a very spectacular moment. And it was fun too, because you saw, we like Nadine's character walk, she walks in, you know, with a leopard skirt. And then when you see her in this like leopard teddy doing, you know, twerking, it was just, you know, kind of crazy. And Carol, the other, you know, the, the foster mom, you know, we added, it, we had two blouses and we embellished the second one with pearls all over the, all over the blouse and gave her the hat, you know, the Michael Jackson thing, you know, little ode to him as she's moonwalking, you know, in the thing. So that was, it was really, it, that was just such a joy to do and so much fun. And, you know, I don't know, we, we, that, that was my highlight, I think, of the season was that particular episode. Oh, it definitely stands out. Um, and one other one that I think really stands out for an entirely different reason is the sixth episode, which is set in Alabama. Um, mm -hmm. Such a beautiful, great episode. And you get to do some, you know, they're just small flashbacks, but some period work, um, yeah. you know, looking at Edwin's childhood. Just talk about, you know, doing the research on how you should dress those children and dress Edwin's mother, um, you know, and giving a really kind of period authenticity to those moments, which are so important to understanding the character. Yes. And, you know, it took place like in the 50s. And we did do a lot of research into that. I spend a lot of time personally down in uh, New Orleans and in the South. Um, I happen to have a place there and I shoot there a lot. Um, I did Your Honor down there. I've done all kinds of series down there. So it's something that I see a lot and, you know, it definitely, especially this was supposed to take place a little bit more in the country. And so things were a little bit more generic, although there were more bedclothes than anything else because she was taken in the middle of the night. Um, believe it or not, the more, it, the sheriffs were actually kind of a little bit more difficult to research because it is a small town and, you know, you have to get the period right and the patches right and everything else. So, I mean, there were just like different things in that realm that, you know, we found and we wound up and some were supposed to, be, you know, they were supposed to be more in plain clothes, not in, you know, uniforms and things like that. So that was kind of an interesting little road to, to follow, but that was a stunning a stunning one. And I actually, I loved Carrie's outfit in that particular one, the overalls and things that she wore. I thought that was really kind of fun. Uh, Edwin's hat too, uh, I loved. Um, Caroline B. Marks, congratulations on Unprisoned. Thank you so much for talking to Gold Derby today. Thank you, it was really wonderful. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.